Hi and welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be getting into some bodywork on the 110. The vehicle's definitely already had a paint job. So you can see, and I'll show some close-ups, where it's got the, the, the original limestone white underneath, and it's got like a brighter white over the top, which is obviously when it had its respray. We're going back to the limestone white, so it's a, a yellowish uh, vintage antique white. But on these panels here, we've got a little bit of blistering. Now it's not awful, but I'm gonna have to take it back a fair bit to get it smooth so it's ready to paint. <laughs> I'm just basically trying to get this basic paint off, but you can just see it's feathering. Look at this. So that's what you're up against when you've got a lot of filler. So behind here, it's really bad. So it's, it's just not worth hitting it with a, just a sanding disc. We're gonna have to go in there with a flat disc and just take that whole area back and then see what we've got and work from there. Okay, you can see pretty drastic, um, but that's where the culprit is. Look, you can see that's been tapped in to allow a skim of a deep skim of filler, and uh, we're going to have to treat that again. So let's get that buzz now with the uh, sander. So the trouble with repairs like this is it's a big panel. It's in a really obvious place, and it's a really flat wing. So if we do a bad job, it's going to look awful. So we've got a couple of choices. For the cost of a wing, that could be an option. I think off the top of my head, about 70 quid. We could fit a wing in place. We've got good access. We, you know, it's probably a two hour job to take this wing off and fit a new one. Is that possibly a better option than doing the remedial work. I mean, we haven't gone through, there's no holes in this panel, so it does seem a bit of a shame to sacrifice it. So for the sake of filming, we will have a go at repairing this. I'm pretty sure we can get it to look quite nice, but you know, if it's gonna spoil the look of the truck, I'd rather spend 70 quid on a wing. So there's not many intricate parts on a Defender, um, but these hinges are worth getting nice because they're kind of right at the front of the vehicle. I want them to be seen and be smooth and look new really. And the same's gonna go for the bonnet hinges. If I can't get those tidy, I might fit some new ones, but again, they will be painted to the same body color just to keep it classic looking. But it's just worth spending a wee bit time getting these looking good. We'll get them primed up ready and make sure they're nice and smooth. Okay, so there's a little trick here. We want to be able to get underneath the seal. I don't want to take the seal off at the moment. I just want to make this, uh, just prime it and just, you know, get it ready for paint. So what I've done is I've just pulled the seal out of the way and just pinned it back. You could use little screws for this or I've just used dead rivet um, prongs that I always seem to leave around everywhere. So that's quite useful. So again, we've got corrosion here. 
um, behind here, so I'm trying to treat it, but it's just never ending. So that is why we're doing a temporary treatment to this bulkhead rather than repairing it properly. Um, I'm fully aware that it's not a re proper repair, but there is a good chance that we're going to be doing the bulkhead on this in the future. So we just need it to last six months to a year, um, which it will easily with what I've got in mind. But we're going to get that done. We'll get all this shaped, all this treated and get it all primed up and ready so we know it's smooth and ready for paint. In the past, I've used some aluminium mesh, which is great, uh, works really well. But for this job, I got a massive roll of galvanized brick layers support mesh. And I'm gonna use that to create something to fill the void in here, because what I wanna do is actually uh, put some resin fiberglass in there to create the shape. Um, it it's, should be fairly easy to do. And by creating a void filler with this mesh it'll still allow any moisture any water which i'm sure we're going to get to run through here because obviously this has been caused because obviously something stopped water escaping from the bottom here whether it be the old rotten what what dirt whatever it was it's all being cleared out now so the last thing i want to do is is actually create a blockage in there so rather than use expanding foam i'm using this mesh just to push it into the void it's galvanized so it should Resist corrosion. That's good. So get it wrapped up like this, look. And then get it pushed in. And if your fingers aren't strong enough, you could use a hammer. We need to try and get ourselves a nice corner. Folded that up four times, and then I'm gonna open it. And that has given us kind of like a peak, you can see there. We can get that in there, that'd be great. Okay, really, really chuffed with that. So, that is our structure back. So you can see, there's our corner. And that should act as our strengthener. Give this a wipe down with some degreaser before we get started. Once we get our resin in there, that'll just lock it all into place. Right, I'm going to be using this P40, which is a body filler for holes, so it's basically fiberglass strands. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to mix that with some traditional filler, because that means that once it's in there, we can sand it and we'll get a smoother finish rather than the rough coarse finish you get with that stuff. So it's like a, an intermediate finish before we finally coat it. So here is the mix. Now we've got regular P38 filler and we've got the P40 fibrous filler. We're gonna mix everything together and I've put quite a lot of hardener in there because I want it to go off quick. So we need to make sure it's all mixed up well into, until it goes pink. So it's a creamier texture with that P38 filler in there but it has got the strength of the P40 so you can mix the two up so this could get messy well it will get messy but that's okay and I'm gonna try and push it in so all we've really done is we've just basically given ourselves the ability to fill a big void and get some structure onto there which means we can then work with that so we're gonna let that go off it's gonna take probably quite a while and we'll come back to it so while that's curing, it's worth mentioning that there are quite a few, as I said before, repair panels you can buy uh, that will do that job a lot better. But you do need access, really, to do the job properly, a welder. We don't have a welder here. We're not allowed to do any welding in the building. So that's another reason why we've gone down this road. So what's really important about these repair panels is you can just take out the section you want. You don't have to replace the whole thing. And sometimes that makes a lot more sense. So if you can get this outer wing off, you could then just literally cut into the bulkhead and then you could slot that in. Now these repair panels, they're not perfect. Well, this one isn't anyway. Now you'll see there's quite a bit of creasing on the back here. Can you see that? And the worst piece is probably that little lump there. So, you know, they do require quite a lot of fettling to make them look good when they're on the vehicle. I mean, no more than what we've done there, but at the end of the day, you weld this in, you know, it's not gonna be absolutely perfect. Well guys, that's about it for today's episode. I'm gonna get started now on buzzing down this resin, try and get it smoothed off. So in the next episode, we'll look at getting the final coat of filler on there, some glaze, getting it looking nice and ready for paint. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up if you did. Please do subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.